Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. I want you to stand with me. And I want to say tonight, and it's been a long time since I've ever said what I'm getting ready to say, but this is a prophetic message to you tonight, to all of us. And I know some things. Some things I'm not going to talk about, some things I am, but I know some things. You know, even what Christian said tonight is uh, even about the river, uh, about our attention. But I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to your pastor tonight. I want you to hear what the Lord has to say to you tonight. I'm glad you're here tonight, Jennifer. I want you to stretch your hands this way. Father, tonight, Lord, let your errors, Father, your errors tonight, find their way into the hearts of Your people. Lord, tonight I I decree by the Word of the Lord that God, that we're running out of time and run out of time quick. God, tonight, You're talking to Your church. You're talking to Your people. Lord, I want to thank You tonight. I want to thank You, God, because You're the Lord, because You know all things. And Lord, I want to thank You for Your graciousness and Your mercy and Your grace. And God, and even tonight, Lord, we want to thank You for the anointing. God, I ask You now to bless Your people. God, open up our hearts for this next 30 minutes. God, to hear what You say. To hear what Your Spirit would speak to Your people tonight. And Lord, I want to give You the praise. God, I want to thank You right now. Lord, I ask You to release Your people right now, God, from all heaviness, God, from all burdens, God, from every attack, every assignment of the enemy, God. And Lord, I pray for those that aren't in church. Those, there have been people in our church, the devil's lied to them. He's, a, he's, he's cre- lanes have crept in to, uh, uh, to keep them out of the church, Lord. And Lord, their lives aren't going to go as well. Father, I pray for them tonight. I pray you would draw them back. I pray, God, that you would bring them back. Whatever you've got to do, Lord. Because God, you're the Lord. And I want to give you the praise now and the honor and the glory. And God, in the name of Jesus, the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight, I want to talk to you out of the book of Kings. Second Kings. And we all know, everybody in here knows who the prophet Elisha was. Elisha, the prophet, God's servant, God's man, in that particular time, And in the Scripture that I want to talk about tonight, I've talked about it before, but never in this context. Now church, I I, I want you to listen to me, okay? Because we really need to draw near to God. You need to draw near to God, and I need to draw near to God. I'm not just saying that because I'm a preacher. I'm going to show you some things tonight that the Lord has laid on my heart. But this is an incredible miracle. But it's going to go a whole lot deeper tonight, and I, and I want to show you. I want to go into a few different places with you tonight that I've, that I've not in a long time. As the Lord gave me this Word, um, I want you to meditate on it. I, I, want you to, I want you to just listen to it and forget it. I want you to begin to meditate on it. I want you to listen I think it's one of the most important messages he's given me in a long time for the church. I want to read it to you. 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. And it says, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, before I even go any further, the first thing I want you to know, the sons of the prophets, they all knew who God were. They knew God. They, they, they were doing something. They, they, weren't, they weren't sitting down on God. They didn't have their attention anywhere else. 
But, but they, they knew God. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. I'm going to come back and talk about that word. That word is spelled S-T-R-A-I-T. I want to tell you about it in just a minute. I want you to remember. He said the place that we're dwelling now, it's too straight for us. Let us go. We pray thee unto Jordan. And take thence every man a beam. And let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Now here is the, here is the key to this whole message. Listen. Let me read it again. So he went with him, and he said, When they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. So there was a reason. They had a reason. They had a, they had a plan. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water and he said, I'm sorry, and he cried and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And watch what he did. And he cut down a stick and cast it in tither, and the iron did swim. It swam. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee, and he put it out. And he put out his hand, and he took it. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put it out, put out his hand. Look at me, and he took it. Are you ready? Stretch your hands this way one more time. Lord, tonight, I ask you for the anointing upon this word. I pray, Heavenly Father, God, it will shake us to the core. And God, I ask You to minister to Your people tonight. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen. The first thing it talked about, it talked about how that these men of God... Actually, there was a prophets. It was a school of prophets. They loved God and they they, they loved people. And the Bible talks about how that uh, they they, they said to Elisha, "We, we need to leave this place because... This place that we dwell now is too straight for us. Now let me, let me go into a, a, a very great word for you tonight. A lot of times as a Christian, as, as believers, not, not, not the place that you and I have with God, but our relationship with God, it gets crowded, it gets too straight. That's what that word there means. It became cramped. Listen. It became a place that was too tight. Listen, it became a place, God said to me. He said, I want you to tell me, it became a place of confusion. And and, and if you've ever heard a word tonight, there's something that I want you to see in this, is that they said, we can't dwell here anymore. Because we're in a place, and this is where I'm going, we're in a place that has become crowded. You know, and when we were singing about the river, you know, I, I, my hair stood up on my arms because they were at the River Jordan when this happened. And had they never moved, this would have never happened. But, you know, it's, it's funny because when you begin to move out of a place that you can identify with no more, that you can be in no more, the enemy will try to stop you before you ever get started. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? So tonight I want you to see that, and, and Christian spoke on it briefly, is that, that your identity, you don't identify with everything else. You don't, you don't worry about everything else. In the hour that you live, you better have your thoughts and your heart and your mind on the Lord Jesus because church, whether you believe or not, I know we've been preached, Josh has preached on it, Gil's has, people all the world, but we are running out of time. When he, when the prophet went on to say, he, uh, when, he, when he was talking about how a last master for it was borrowed, I want to show you something. When the Spirit of God is not present, when the Spirit of God is, is not there, listen, when the Spirit of God, who, who in this particular uh, representation represented the accent, because with, without the power of God, we must not even have church. Amen. Without the presence of God, we're without hope in the world. We're without a power in the world. We can't line up. We're like Peter. 
We can't get it right. We're like the prophets. We're down in the water and we're sunken down in the water. But God is telling us tonight to come out of this place. God is telling us tonight to reach down and get what belongs to you. There are some things that you don't have to ask anybody. There are some things that just belong to us. There are some things that you and I just need to pick it up again. We need to pick up the altar again. We need to pick up our prayer life again. We need to go back to church again. We need to quit... And letting everything else steal our attention. There was great purpose in this axe head. This axe that had there was great purpose. God wanted you to know that that you have great purpose in your life. God, everybody in here, you 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 have a great purpose to be here. You're not just here, like Christian said, you're not just here sitting down, taking up space. We are a Holy Ghost church. We are filled with the power of God. I mean, I don't know how much more plain. I mean, I think sometimes, just like here, we forget the work that God is allowing us to do. We're doing a great work for God. All of us. You're doing a great work for God. And people say, well, you know, we forget. Well, you know, I look at Evelyn. I don't forget. I look at Evelyn is healed. God healed her. That is a miracle sitting right there. We've seen demons come out of people. Have we forgotten the demons that God has allowed us to cast out of people? We've seen them delivered and set free. And have we forgotten all the times that God has refreshed us and come and replenished us and come and has spoken to us through the Word and through the gifts of the Spirit? God wants you to know that we're not in a straight place anymore. We're in a large place. He set us in a large room tonight. Without the Spirit of God, our lives are no good. Our service to the Lord is no good without the axe head, without the power of God in your life. And you know, if we just allow it to lay dormant, we'll lay, we'll lay dormant right there, and everybody else around us will be doing what they're supposed to be doing, and we're wondering, well, should I pick it up? Well, should I take it up? And He's already told us right here in the Scripture, my God, reach down and take it. God told that particular one that lost what He had, He said, get it and pick it up and get back to work. Somebody, my God, help me preach. You see, a reason a lot of people are behind locked doors and and, and they're in a a place that it's crowded is because they're dwelling in, in a place that God doesn't want them to dwell in. The world is is in disarray because they have pushed God out. See, they don't want to pick up what God has. They don't want to handle the things of God. They don't desire the blessings in the presence of God. But thank God Almighty we do. Thank God Almighty that you and I have been saved by the blood and by the cross. And you know, and the first thing that he did when he was in trouble... When he went to Elisha, Elisha, he was the man of God, but you know what Elisha did? The first thing he did, he went and cut down a stick. Well, if you study that word out right there, that stick could also be interpreted a branch, the branch. Let me read right here. In Isaiah 11 and 1, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Somebody say Amen. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge. Hallelujah. And the fear of the Lord. And and God went on to say about him, And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of the eyes, neither reprove, hallelujah, after the hearing of the ears. But Brother Gary, he said, but with righteousness, somebody shout righteousness in this place. Shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth? And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. That's what's going on now. God is getting ready to smite the earth. We're just seeing the beginnings of it. And with the breath of his lips, he said, he will slay the wicked. God went on to talk about to me how that Without the Spirit of God, we we could just be in the building. It's more than just the Word. It's it's a lot more. And I'm going to show you what I mean because when when He talked about, and I'm going to go about the axe head for a minute, when He talked about it was sunken on the bottom of the Jordan. 
And don't you remember what happened when Joshua went across Jordan? One of the first things that he did before they went across, they, they dropped big old rocks in Jordan. It was in the Jordan. But later on, they got them out of Jordan and set it up on the other side. I don't think...